right. <clears throat> Promised <laughs> I'd get this video on. Okay, uh, the head makes a big difference. I just have a crappy JVC head, but um, oh, my subwoofer, I put it way in the back of my Jeep. I had it below the seat, but I figured it'd be better that way. Um, you're probably not going to better hear the bass, but I'm going to play it anyway. Now, I think it cuts off right at about maybe 35, 40. That's when it starts getting really full. But I downloaded a bass CD that kind of helps, um, I guess, hear the, the bass on this thing. It really is what it's all about, the bass. Music is the controller of the mind, a dimension where bass and treble are the necessities of all men. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, six. Right about there, it starts cutting our block. Now, also down here, the switch. I didn't even have it all the way up. So let's go ahead and back it off a little bit. This stuff's really tunable, but in my opinion, people want to know, is it really worth the hundred bucks? Hell yeah. It'll really, it'll wake up your, your system. If you just have mids and highs, a factory system, crappy system, or even in a Jeep, in my case, this base came out really, really good. Let's go to the back. Yeah, it's all wired up, but that's another thing. You have to make sure you bolt this thing down really, really tight. See here, you, you hear how it's shaking? I don't have mine bolted all the way down. These rubber, these rubber boots make a difference. So does it work? Yes, works good. It'll definitely make anything sound good. Anything sound better than what you have. You already have subs. Um, what the hell are you doing looking at this? If you need space, this is gonna do it. Now, in my opinion, this is a 10 inch sub. So if this doesn't work out later on, I might just replace the sub with another shallow sub. Maybe a JL Audio or something. But I think the problem here, honestly, is they probably could use maybe another 0.5 or maybe even 0.5 or maybe even another cubic foot of space to really get that bass rumbling. But um, I like it. I think it's awesome. It really makes a big difference. Let's get back in there. Yeah, it's a big stupid wires in. Okay. Let's hear some uh, real music. Those are my <laughs> speakers up there making a lot of noise. Let's back up. find something. 
These are the new 10 inch and 12 inch additions to the RV series subwoofer systems. They're available in either single or dual woofer versions and each kit comes with a subwoofer housed in a ported enclosure, a RVA 600.1 200 watts RMS class AB monoblock amplifier, an amp installation wiring kit that comes with all the necessary accessories to properly install the amp and sub into your car, and a base remote knob so you can control the level of the amp from the front of your car. But before we look at anything else let's head to the car and check out a demo we have all right guys we're in the car i just finished installing the rv 10.2b now before you go and install your amplifier please check out this video we made on how to properly install your amplifier so you know that you're doing it correctly and if your amp ever goes into protect mode we have another video on that that you can check out so please check that out let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like here we go So I am super impressed. Two 10 inch woofers shaking the whole car and this is an all in one system in the sense that it comes with everything that you need to easily get it installed into your vehicle. You know, if you don't want that much bass, you could go with one of the single sub models like the RV 10.1 or the RV 12.1 but this is a very impressive unit in that it gives that clean sound, but it also has that growling low end that we seek as bass heads. Let's go back to the room and check out some other specs. Now, as you saw in the demo, all the kits come with everything you need to set up this subwoofer system into your vehicle. The 10 inch and 12 inch subs come enclosed in either a single or dual ported braced MDF enclosure. And the subs themselves feature a 1.5 aluminum four layer voice coil with bumped and vented magnet motor structures and respectively 50 ounce and 60 ounce magnets and polypropylene cones. The amp is our monoblock 4 ohm stable RVA 600.1 that features power ground remote and speaker terminals on one side and on the other side it has RCA inputs and outputs and even a high level input if you're going directly into your speaker wire from a car that has a stock head unit. There is a gain knob and a bass EQ to boost low end frequencies from 0 to 12 dB and then a low pass filter adjustable from 50 hertz to 250 hertz and a subsonic high pass filter are adjustable from 10 hertz to 50 hertz. You can use both of these filters together to really get a targeted sound around the bass frequencies you want. There's a switch to use the amp with the filters or in full range mode, which will let all the frequencies come through. There's a logic turn on switch, which allows you to let the amp be turned on either from when it gets power from the car or when the amp senses audio signal from the head unit. And over here, we have the bass remote port for the included bass remote knob that allows you to control the level of the amp from the front of the car. Now the kit also comes with all the power ground and remote wires as well as speaker wire to connect the amp to the subs and RCA cables plus additional accessories for a cleaner and easier install. So if you're looking for a single or dual 10 inch or 12 inch all in one subwoofer system package for your setup, check out the newest additions to the RV lineup from Rockville. Hi, it's Ashley from AB Sound Advice. Today we are looking at the Hippo 152R. Now you'll quite amazingly, the, our friends at Massive Audio and their wisdom, and I'll just slide that over a little bit for you, um, they created the Hippo XL 152R. Now when the, we've already done the Hippos, you know, the 152. Now you're thinking to yourself, how much difference could an R be? Well, it can be a lot. And when I say a lot, let's just go through what a lot is. So, in our normal uh, Hippo series, the 152 had the three inch voice coil. And yes, they were pretty damn heavy. This thing here takes things to a different world. So now we're sitting at a 35 kg plus weight of this 15. We now have a four inch voice coil. And we've now gone out to 6,000 watts with 3,000 RMS. So, 
This is a whole different world. We've entered into the world of, let's see how much damage we can do to our car. <laughs> and people who are in the SPL world will know exactly what I mean. And of course, it's got the heavy duty. So it's got all the same fruit, the Kevlar reinforced non-pressed paper cone. It's got all the, the qualities that you'd expect at this level, but they've just now taken it out to a four inch voice coil, taken it past the 35 kg mark, which means it's a heavy subwoofer. So while I've got it on my, I've again got it on my Lazy Susan, which I use for doing reed coding kits, and that allows us to turn the sub around without having to get a hernia while doing it. So you can see direct connect connections again, spin it around the other side, direct connect connections. And we'll just turn the box around, and you can see on the side of there, we are dealing with a D2, so we can get down to one ohm on this, um, 430 <laughs> ounce um, magnet structure. I mean, it's just, yeah, I can feel it on my arm. So definitely the guys at uh, Massive Audio, the, this is definitely, you can tell, um, the Hippo, this is the Super Hippo, you should just about call it. So if you're getting a 152, yes, that's awesome. But if you're getting a 152R and you're wondering why the price just jumped, it's because it is a completely different woofer. So the Hippo XL 152R is what we're looking at today. And I will just You'll just be a pause while I grunt this off my little stand. One second. Damn. All right. Well, it doesn't get this on its side. I'll just get that around so you can see. So you'll see in the video now, I mean, this is a big woofer. There is no argument. I mean, look at the back end of that, and I'll just bring you back a little bit further so you can see the whole thing. So, no, massive definitely have made a massive woofer here so there is no argument this is a very big woofer and again massive massive construction the whole thing it really should be called well i think they've covered it off i mean the hippo xl uh, 152r i guess the r i'm not sure what that meant but maybe it's retrofit <laughs> or i'm not 100 percent sure I, I haven't clarified what that was but Wow, what a, what a subwoofer. So if you're looking for something and you, you really want to rock the car, and again, this one of these is 35 kg, two of these you're hitting at 70. That's a lot of weight to be chucking in the car full time, but it's worth it if you love a lot of bass. So I'll just again turn this around like I've done in previous videos. Thank goodness we've got a good balance here, so we're not going to lose control of it. Great front end. You can see, again, I love the, the cone. and I'll just take it right round to the back again. And you can see straight off the bat, that is an absolutely fantastic woofer. So I'll just bring that back to its normal position. Back over here. So.
Manella for the new Simple on Amazon.com. You don't just want to hear music through your car stereo, you want to feel it, man. So consider a subwoofer, a dedicated speaker that handles frequencies below 200 hertz, meaning fewer than 200 sound waves per second. The bass. But subwoofers are not for shaking the windows and vibrating your spleen, although in certain circumstances, that would be nice. Fact is, good subwoofers can help your car stereo with high frequency sound too. How? Subwoofers play the low frequencies so the car's smaller speakers don't have to. Result? The little tweeters can focus on their specialty, the upper register. Most subwoofers come in three sizes, 8, 10, and 12 inches. Some have the amplifier built in, but some don't. Make sure you get an amp if your sub doesn't have one. Now match your sub to your music preference. A smaller sub is often in a wooden box with a speaker on one end, fits in the trunk or under a seat, gives you tight, accurate bass, but needs a powerful amp to drive it. Type two, bigger ported subwoofers. Holes or vents let out more of the speaker's sound, but can be a little boomier. Three, and often the biggest, a subwoofer sealed in a box with a plexiglass cover. Cool. Does well only in a narrow frequency range and sounds really boomy. Polka. Want more car audio tips? Check out the widest selection of car audio and video products on amazon.com slash car electronics.